Hi everybody, this is Mark Weissman. Welcome back to um, the ninth video in version two of my um, book list and textbooks for uh, physicists. Um, this, um, the ninth one here is on astronomy, astrophysics, cosmology, and I added some miscellaneous books because I don't have that many books on astronomy and cosmology. Um, I have one very good book on astronomy. It probably was the best book written on astronomy, but it's old. It was published in 1981. It's very famous. It's by Frank Hsu. Unfortunately, he never updated it. It's still worthwhile reading, but it's not going to have any of the uh, many advances in astronomy in the last 40 years. But um, trust me, it's still worthwhile reading. And when you look at the reviews on this book, you get things like, this is the best astronomy and physics book ever. Best book to feel the subject. Frank Shu emphasizing deconnection, Feynman of astronomy. The best introductory astrophysics book, sadly, hasn't been updated in 40 years. So, all I can tell you is I'm not sure whether you should read this book, but you should try and find an astronomy book that's hopefully close to this in quality and everything. Um, nothing else I can say. Except that this book is amazing. It goes, you know, it just goes all the way from in and out, from the earth to the sun to the universe, and then back. But it's not current. Um, when I was at Caltech, I took a course by uh, taught by Roger Blanford. Now at, um, oh, I can't remember. He's on a California school up north. He left Caltech. It might be at Santa Barbara. I think actually he's at Stanford. Um, anyway, this is a, um, this was an excellent book on high energy astrophysics and it's been republished several times. I think I had the first edition, this is the third edition, and it's written by the author Malcolm S. Longhair. We've met him before he published those concept books on um, theoretical physics and, and quantum mechanics. So um, he's a very good writer and this uh, emphasizes, you know, high energy astrophysics, gamma rays and supernova and everything that happens in between those bursters and all that other stuff. So um, it's definitely very physics-y. Um, this might be like a graduate level book. It is a graduate level book. And um, like I said, it's expanded tremendously. My book only has like about 500 pages. This is up to 800. So I recommend this book. Um, another book, he also wrote a, a sort of like a history book of astrophysics and cosmology in the 20th century. So this book is just all reading. There's no, um, I mean, there's some equations in this book, but it's mostly, um, I'm trying to think, you know, it's mostly a history and what, who, what was discovered and when. But it's well worth reading if you're not that familiar with astronomy and cosmology. Um... This is a, um, I don't own this book and I've never read it. This is probably the standard book on modern astrophysics that's for undergraduates. Um, and, um, you know, I, I can only say check it out. I think it's on like the second edition. It's current. It's one of these books which I'm sure has a lot of words and a lot of pictures. And, um... I'm not really sure on, you know, how physically it is. I'm sure it's got a lot. Well, I'm going through all those appendices, so. Um, so it's a good reference book for an undergraduate who's going to major in um, astronomy or astrophysics. Um, I think. So I'm not, like I said, I've never read this, so I really don't know. But I think this is the undergraduate standard. Um, now, Steven Weinberg has a very short book that he wrote just before he passed away a couple of years, Lectures on Astrophysics. This is a difficult book. Um, all of Weinberg's books are difficult, not because he doesn't write well or not because he doesn't do everything, but because he goes deeply into a subject and he develops it from start to finish. 
and following all the equations and everything is often different. But you can see from the table of contents, he treats selected models and all the sort of like concepts in, um, you know, not everything in astrophysics, but a lot in astrophysics. And um, it's just difficult. I mean, you have to verify all these equations and understand what's going on. It's nonstop, as you can see from that. Very physics-y book and not easy. Um... The standard undergraduate book on cosmology is by Barbara Ryden, and she's got a whole bunch of other books. I actually bought this book. It was used for the MIT MOOC on um, cosmology and inflation taught by Alan Guth. And, um, you know, the only thing I can say about this book is that, um, you know, there's, there's no passion in the book. And it's short. It seems to be at the undergraduate level, and it seems to cover everything you need, but it's like they develop one equation after another, but they don't really, like, tie it all together or something. So, it's only 250 pages. I just, uh, it might be a good place to start on cosmology. Um, the reference book, the standard book on cosmology, again, by Steven Weinberg, this is his, don't, don't confuse this with his General Relativity and Cosmology book that he wrote in the 70s. Steven Weinberg, in, after he finished his quantum field theory um, series of books, three of them, he was looking for something to do and he decided to um, reacquaint himself with cosmology and update everything he knew and just derive everything. And he decided to write this book. And this is like, it's a detailed, self-contained, and comprehensive treatment. And um, he, read, he has some like unique derivations in here and everything. Nothing is skipped. Um, and it was all up to date in 2007. I don't think much has changed since then. So, um, I mean, uh, maybe a few things. But he just goes in detail about everything. He sort of assumes, even though he has an appendix on general relativity, he sort of assumes you're familiar with general relativity. And lots of equations in this book, and he just covers it all, you know, the early universe, inflation, fluctuations, um, anisotropies, structure growth, lenses, um, and inflation. So um, it's a very good, difficult book on cosmology, but it is complete and authoritative, so I would recommend it for anybody who wants to become an expert on cosmology. Um... I'm missing a book here. I'm going to have to find it. Um, hold on one second. I for some reason left this out. This is a very interesting book that was published in, in the 1990s. And um, it's in that Frontiers of Physics series. And um, it's really well worthwhile. Maybe it's been updated, but... Let's see when they have the publication date, 1994. And it, um, it was the first book I read which really covered all these things. It's by famous astrophysicist Colbert Turner. And um, let me just show you the table of contents. It's not nearly as hard as Weinberg's book, let's put it that way. So that's why, even though this might seem a little dated, a lot of it is still very good. And it talks about the expansion of the universe, Robinson Walker, Mecca, Standard Cosmology, how elements were synthesized, thermodynamics, how barons were formed, the phase transitions, inflation, and structure formation. And it even has a chapter on the axion and the discussion of the Planck epoch. So this is well worth reading still and might give you a, um, might be an easier read than Weinberg, and then you can read Weinberg's book after this. Um, so I think that's all I have on astronomy and cosmology. Um, I wanted to add some books that I left out of my previous sequences. This is a book called Surprises in Theoretical Physics. It's one of these very short books, but it has like interesting like 10-page, 8-page things on like things you wouldn't have expect. And you know, you can see what he covers here. He goes through all of theoretical physics and he talks about things, you know, that uh, you know, for instance, radiation and hyperbolic motion is an interesting treatment. Why doesn't a charged particle, if it's stationary, 
on the Earth, why doesn't it radiate? Because according to the equivalence principle, since it's in a gravitational field, if you go to its reference frame, you could think of it as um, accelerating, and charged particles accelerate. So why doesn't this one? And he explains it all and everything. There was a lot of controversy about some of these things, and, and he sort of does that. Uh, I would say the level of this is graduate level, because while some are undergraduate, on average you have to have a decent equation with statistical physics and condensed matter physics and certainly quantum mechanics and relativity. And he wrote a follow-up book, which is just more of the same. Um, let me get to the table of contents. You know, just things that happen that you wouldn't have expect in theoretical physics, you know. Um, commutators and field theory is very good. This one's only 100 pages long. So if you can get cheap versions of these books, it would definitely be worth it. But the book, one of the books that I really, really like is Sleeping Beauties in Theoretical Physics. This guy has like 26 amazing things, and a lot of these are at the undergraduate level or advanced undergraduate level, and you can understand them, and he sort of works out, you learn a lot, and he works out all the equations and everything, or at least puts them down, and he has um, all kinds of things on astronomy and orbits and Lagrange points, things, you, and, and it's just like things you wouldn't expect. So, um, Definitely uh, an excellent read, and like I said, you know, each one of these is about 10 pages. It's only 270 pages, but it's um, it's a really good um, thing to read when you just want to do something new in theoretical physics. Um, finally, here's a book that I reviewed on Amazon, a long review. I think it was published a couple of years ago by Anthony Z. I don't know if I covered this in any of my other uh, videos, so this is uh, fly-by-night physics, how physicists use the back of envelopes, but this is a tiny bit misleading. This really isn't one of those, um, let's do a quick calculation and, and um, let's figure out how to, how to calculate with just approximations. This is based on dimensional analysis, estimates, a lot of things and practice on how to get answers, and he covers um, he covers just about everything um, across the um, all of physics for an under, at the undergraduate level. You know, he starts with dimensional analysis, but he goes on to other things, um, and he's got several principles that he um, talks about, and he goes through general relativity, and he ends up, I think, a little bit with quantum field theory. So um, definitely a worthwhile book to learn how to get answers uh, from approximations and just how to um, do things in theoretical physics. Um, finally, um, there are many, many problem books in physics. This is an old one that I have for like PhD candidates qualify your exams at Princeton. I recommend definitely doing getting one of these books. You can get this one or you can get another one. This is a famous one. It comes with the problems and it comes with solutions and it covers like all the areas that you're expected to know as a graduate PhD student, like mechanics, obviously E and M, quantum mechanics, thermodynamics and statistical mechanics, condensed matter. And then relativity and astrophysics, nuclear physics, elementary particle physics. Here's where you start getting some where sometimes people are weak, atomic and general physics. Then it has all the solutions. So um, either this book or some similar book. And um, so that brings me to the end of this video. And then the final, uh, not the final, but the next video in the series, the 10th one, will be on quantum computation and information and computational physics and just on um, computing and maple and latex you know so the 10th one is mostly on uh, computing and I'll see you then thank you for watching